In section 6.3 we do the opposite of what we did in section 6.2. In section 6.2 we started with a parallelogram and then did its properties. This time we have things that we know about the quadrilateral and we use those things to prove that it is a parallelogram. There are six main ways to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. I know that sounds like a lot, however don't be intimidated. Five of the six methods are just little tweaks on what we have covered in section 6.2. So as long as you understood section 6.2, this section won't be so bad. In fact, it will go pretty quickly. The first method simply uses the definition. This was the definition of a parallelogram. If you get to a point where you can show that both of the opposite sides are parallel, then you can definitely prove the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. The reason you put in a proof is that is the definition of a parallelogram. Simple, right? One down, five to go. Last time we had this theorem that said if we had a parallelogram, then we knew the opposite sides were congruent. Well, the converse also works, and it allows us another way to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. It's just the converse of last time. I told you last time that these theorems didn't have official names, so you had to write them out in a proof. That's when we came up with abbreviations for them. Well, these converses also don't have official names, so they need abbreviations too. Fortunately, the abbreviations are simply the converses of the abbreviations we did last time. Once again, as long as you understood the last section, this should be easy. Hopefully you start to sense a pattern here. Last time we had this theorem. If we had a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. Once again, the converse works. And it allows us another way to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. It also needs an abbreviation. So if you have been paying attention, you probably don't even need this, but here you go anyways. I know six ways to prove parallelograms seemed intimidating, but this isn't so bad, right? Consecutive angles are up next although this one is changed a tiny bit to make your life easier. In the original theorem we had a parallelogram and we could then say that every pair of consecutive angles was supplementary since the lines are parallel and they are same side interior angles. That's great. But if I simply do the converse of it I end up with this which does actually work but it implies that you would have to then show every single combination of consecutive angles was supplementary for it to work. That's four separate things. Yuck. So Let's cut down the work instead. If we show this pair of consecutive angles is supplementary, then we have just shown that those same side interior angles are supplementary, and thus, that these lines must be parallel. That's half the parallelogram. If we show this set of consecutive angles are supplementary, then we have another set of same side interior angles that are supplementary. These same side interior angles let us prove that this pair of lines is parallel. We have finished off our parallelogram. So instead of having to show that all four pairs of consecutive angles are supplementary, we only really needed to show two, which leads us to the improved theorem. To use it, you have to pick one of the four angles. I chose angle A, and then show that it is supplementary with both of its consecutive angles, the purple ones here. Show those two things, and you have proven the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. It needs an abbreviation, and if this one wasn't more of a pain already, it doesn't abbreviate very well either. This is what I would do. The good news is, is that it doesn't come up as often as the others. Back to a really straightforward one. Last time we said that if we had a parallelogram, then the diagonals bisect each other. It had that phrase I said you would need to get used to. The converse works and is easy to use. Just show the diagonals bisect each other and you can say that it is a parallelogram. You do need to have an abbreviation and this one is pretty easy and small too, not too rough. And we have already covered five of the six methods. Now on to the new method. It says that if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is both congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. It is shown in the diagram below. The common mistake is doing something like this. Here one pair of opposite sides is congruent, but the other pair of opposite sides is parallel. This does not work. Make sure it is the same side that is both parallel and congruent like this. Like the rest, this theorem doesn't have an official name, so it's time to abbreviate. I suggest something like this. One of the common mistakes students make with this abbreviation, or even if they write it out fully, is they forget the part about only one pair. That's important. Both pairs would be covered by either the definition or the theorem about both pairs of opposite sides. This theorem only needs one pair of opposite sides, so make sure that is in your abbreviation or description. Other than those common pitfalls, this theorem is pretty easy. Here is a summary of the six methods to prove a quadrilateral as a parallelogram. It probably goes without saying, but you need to know all six methods.